either. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you. Like, I hope everybody had a great Aries full moon. It feels like that was a lot of energy coming through. And I hope that you are finding ways to regulate your, your, your life, your breath, your body, <laughs> your heart, as you take on a lot of new energy from this Aries full moon. Um, because that's what it, that's, that's what's up right now. It's just really learning how to have a more um, dynamic conversation around energy and how it works in our lives um, and how to direct it in ways that work for us. So this month, we're, we're, tonight we're going to talk about um, the next month that is coming for the new moon. We're going to have a new moon in Scorpio, and it's about sourcing the light from our sexual wounds. And I'm Monique. And I'm Cheryl. <laughs> and I'm Christine. Yay. Welcome. And we are the facilitators here at the Progressive Love Academy of the 13 Moon Initiation. So the first thing we want to talk about is um, what is sexual power? Go ahead, Cheryl. You can. I think that you can give us a really good. Um, let's let's to just kind of go over the. Um, so this is kind of a summary of what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, we're going to talk about what sexual power is. Um, we are going to talk about sexual wounds and some of the most common ones, and what the potential power is that's underneath them. Mm. Uh, we're going to talk about this upcoming moon cycle, which is the Scorpio Taurus moon cycle, and kind of explain what the flavor of that is and, and when that starts and what that will look like. Um, we're going to talk about the moon phases and how we work with that. And then we will also talk about how you can go deeper with this if this information resonates with you. All right. <laughs> so sorry, Cheryl. Oh, that's great. Thank you so <laughs> much. Next one. No, we need mm -hmm. that. Thank you. Okay. What is sexual power? So I love this conversation. And let me say, when I started working with the moon, this became um, really clear for me. And the one thing that I learned that I believe you'll get to learn as you move through this process is I learned that my sexual energy and my spiritual energy were the same thing. They were the same thing. And when I learned this, I accessed my capacity to create right? My sexual magic, my capacity to create in the world, the way that I desired to be in the world completely changed. I moved from just seeing my sexuality and engaging my life from my genitals up through my heart and then up through my crown. And I was able to really close the gap between who I was as source energy and my higher self. And that's a big game changer. However, as I moved that energy from my groin up through my heart and out through my crown, there was a lot of healing that took place in my chakras because I had stored wounds that we're going to talk about tonight. And I had power that was trapped in those wounds. And every time I was able to clearly see myself in the wound, I accessed power and that energy learned to move up and to course through my heart and then come up into the universe so that I could know myself as source energy. And this is a huge game changer. And so that's what this next 28 day cycle is going to be about. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that right now. Thank you. That was beautiful, Cheryl. So sexual shame is one of the things that, one of the challenges that come from, um, how we have been conditioned around our sexuality or the experiences that we've had in our lives or the miseducation or any of those kinds of things. And so sexual shame is an aspect that really hinders our power and our creativity from flowing. And um, how that shows up when I was young, my mother was a prostitute. Many of you may have heard me speak about this before. And, and I took my meaning around sexuality and what it meant to be a woman and having sexual power from her, from my mother's way of being, from her work, from the way she 
lived inside of her sexuality and it created a lot of shame for me. And what that shame did was it, it has, um, over my lifetime, I have often acted one way or another based upon the shame, based upon feeling unworthy, based upon feeling like, you know, my womanhood is um, less, less, less valuable than, than manhood, all sorts of belief systems that came from my experience as a child with my mother that then created shame inside of me. And then that, that filtered through my life and impacted nearly everything that I did. And so sexual shame will be one of the, one of the things that we will explore in this next, in this next course for the next, for 28 days to see how we can reclaim our power from things that have, um, experiences we've had that may have created shame within us. Okay. And the next one, <laughs> we put jealousy right on the top just because this is, this is a Scorpio cycle and um, that sign is kind of known for jealousy sometimes. But really, what we're talking about here is emotional imbalance. And one of the things that happens out of being wounded is creating this sense of emotional imbalance. Because if you think about it, what is emotion? Emotion is energy. In motion. A lot of times how emotion actually happens is that we have an experience, we have a thought, and then emotion is generated around that thought. And emotion is something that really it's meant to express. It's meant to flow through us. It's meant to move. It's not really meant to get stuck. We're not meant to hold on to it. It's just, it's something that flows through you. But when we've had experiences of being wounded, it creates a sense of stuckness. And then what we do is we create these coping mecha mechanisms emotionally that keep us in some of these states. So either we shut down the expression of emotion um, or we overexpress. And I can give you an example. In my family growing up, um, I had a father who was um, really prone to rage. And when he got angry, he was also physically abusive. And so what I learned as a child is that when people get angry, I'm going to get hurt. Well, what that created in me then emotionally is, okay, now anger is something that's not just, there's no positive to it. It's like, if someone gets angry, I'm going to get hurt. So I would try to avoid it. In myself, I would suppress my own anger. I would try to avoid it in other people. I became conflict avoidant. And so, of course, because we are, are on a soul level, we are always moving towards wholeness. You know, what do you do then? Well, I attracted people into my life that were angry, you know, to bring this up so that I could heal from it. And so what happens with emotions when they get unbalanced? And, and I can give you, you know, everybody in, that is on this call is going to do it in a different way, you know. Um, jealousy, like, you know, we kind of talked about here. Um, jealousy is a really powerful emotion and people can get stuck in that and never move through it. And the potential that is underneath this coming into emotional balance is that instead of creating these sort of false emotional states to feel something, to feel an intensity, um, you are actually able to generate genuine passion. You know, someone who is shut down emotionally, that's a barrier to being orgasmic. And we know statistically that there's a huge percentage of women, I forgot I was going to look this up, that are not orgasmic. And, you know, this comes from not being able to flow emotions. So this is a huge theme and we're going to look at this theme this month as well. So then we have our mother-father issues or the wounds of the masculine and the feminine. And um, so we learn, right? We learn how to relate to each other by watching the dynamics of the parents, the people, the adults that were moving around us. And so we literally absorb and take in the way that we are going to relate to the other gender based upon how we start happen as small children. So for me, right, I lived in a very dysfunctional, situation, my mother and father's dynamic, 
My father was an alcoholic and my mother was always in a victim role. And my father literally was forcing himself on her all the time. And he was forcing himself on us all the time. So as I got in touch with my sexuality, like Christine was saying, right? I had this story that came around my pleasure. I had these dynamics that I began to play out that were very familiar. It was like I was playing out the different faces of what was going on with my mother and my father. And we do this constantly, and this puts us in a space of, um, well, repressing, repressing our energies, being in this imbalance with the person that's outside of us, whether we're in, of the masculine or the feminine energy. We're always playing out an issue. We're always trying to get what our parent didn't give us. And we, we're constantly looking instead of, instead of coming at our lover from this place where we're really wanting to have passion and pleasure and orgasmic experiences of bliss. We're trying to get some emotional needs met and there's some confusion. So as you move up, as I was saying earlier, right, our sexual energy is all about, um, it's our, our, our creative power. As we move up and we get to see our wounded masculine and our wounded feminine, based upon the experience we've had of the mother-father, we are then able to come into balance within ourselves and we bring that energy back into, we harness it and it's ours, right? We get to choose. We get to become deliberate creators when we're able to harness that energy and come back into balance. And so we're going to move you through this perspective as well as we're moving through the 28 days. So we are going to, um, this month will, or the next new one will put us in the Scorpio Taurus cycle where these, these are put the polarities and Scorpio governs our ability to share power and resources, our sexuality, and Taurus governs our senses and the way we, our relationship to the external reality. It, it's how we build our external reality. And so this month, we will explore those areas within our own astrological chart and then how they show up personally in our lives. And as we do that, we'll do that using the phases of the moon. And we do that because, just, I'm sorry, just because the moon is in, the moon will be in Scorpio when the, when the moon and the sun are together, then that is the new moon. And when the moon and the sun are in opposition, then that is the full moon. And so we will explore the axis of that, the axis of that as it lives inside of us internally. One of the things that is unique about what we do in the moon room. Christine, we can't hear you. There's eight phases of the moon, and um, we're moving through that cycle every month, and that, that cycle starts for October on October 21st. And so we're taking both of these perspectives. The Bagua system is something that was developed um, for progressive love by uh, Carl Stevens, Rakem Siku, um, and... Uh, and this is a manifestation system that follows the moon cycles. And so what you get to do in any of these given cycles is we have the astrological theme, but you're going to move through the different phases of the moon and you have different energies available to you over the course of the month. And that's what, what we do is we use that energy to our benefit. So we focus on where the energy naturally is during the month to work on the theme that we're working on. And it's really, really powerful when you do this. You know, you can take your two objectives that you have in any given moon cycle and it helps you become really clear. There are portions of the cycle where you're doing more internal work. There's portions of the cycle where you're doing more external work. And we take you through that entire process and also in the context of the astrology that's going on. And we also talk about kind of the astrological weather in the group as well. So it's a really, really powerful process together. So 
So we're going to also look at working with the elements. Um, we are all naturally, we come together, we coalesce together with the air, fire, earth, water, and ether. And all of these energies are the energies that make up the energies of the universe, that make up the source energy that's running through your body. It is, the, um, it is your sensual, sexual, spiritual energy. And so we're going to focus on the different elements through the different phases of the moon. There'll be a way for you to connect um, in a sacred way with the element to support you in aligning with whatever it is that moon has you focused on. And the cool thing is, is this is exactly what your sexual energy is made of. The energy that's coursing through your body is a combination of air, fire, earth, water, and then the ethers, right? The space that would come out of nowhere. So I'm going to help you um, have a different, deepen your relationship to these elements within you and all around you and support you to deepening your connection to your own, um, your own spiritual and sexual energy. Yeah, so that you can become more aligned. So in October, on October 21st, we start our next course. The course goes for 28 days. And if you are interested in joining the 13 Moons Initiation, um, you can choose two short goals class runs for 28 days and then we also it really is a year-long program that for every month we are taking the initiates through another aspect of themselves that is also happening in our astrological experience to plant new energy to open up new aspects so that we can become ourselves more in a in a different aligned way as our world is changing so much we get to I like to say to myself, I'm still here, so I need to figure out how to continue to be alive and continue to grow and flourish in ways that, um, that bring pleasure and joy to my life and to those around me. So if you join the 13 Moons Initiation, for those of you who are not already a, a member or a part of it, because I see that many of you already are, so I thank you for being here. But if you join, there is a private Facebook group. Um, there's daily guidance, and that includes live videos. There, is, there are two rituals. Um, there is a, a new moon ritual, meditation ritual, and there is a full moon medita meditation ritual. There, um, there also are gu guidance around creating rituals, like Cheryl does the elemental, el I'm sorry, my mouth is so dry. Cheryl does the elemental rituals. <laughs> um, you have access to Cheryl, myself, and Christine. You have the Moon Manifestation Library, which has countless videos and information on how, you know, breathing workshops, I mean, breathing rituals, all sorts of things to help you really open up your consciousness and create a relationship to the moon and the work inside of yourself. Um, there will be accountability exercises and we will have emails that will like email and information that help you focus on the moon work that you're doing every day and this is generally $97 a month but for those who are new who will sign up today you can sign up for $49 for the first month by using the code 13 moons scorpio and this is the bit link and so we would love to have you and if anybody has any questions, now will be the time to ask. You can come off mute. Um, I have a question. Wait, who's this? This is Meredith. Hi. Hi, Meredith. How are you? I'm good. I'm grateful to be here. Um, I, uh, you guys are fast and smart. <laughs> <laughs> and I missed something on the Taurus aspect of the cycle. Um, it, it was, uh, yeah. So I was just wondering if you could touch on that. Um, so, well, Taurus, so there's a, the full moon will be in Taurus. So the new moon is in Scorpio and the opposite of Scorpio is Taurus. And so they, they ride the polarities together is what I would say. That's how I would say it. So Taurus is our relationship 
to our material world. It's how we make money. It's governed by Venus. Um, it also governs the second house, which is about our self-esteem. And then Scorpio is the opposite of that, the eighth house. And that governs our shared money, like how we share money with others, our sexuality, and, um, and it is governed by Pluto. Christine, do you want to say anything about that? Or is there? Yeah, I, I think that what, what is going to come up this month is really this opportunity to sort of balance these two different things, you know, both our ability to be in our physical body, be in the physical world, you know, like do what needs to be done in the physical world while also understanding that, you know, that isn't all that we are. And so, um, so yeah, you know, crisis around our worthiness, our ability to source pleasure from our bodies, our sexuality, our money, our shared money, like all of those are really real themes with this mm -hmm. happening. And I think that with a, a powerful Taurus full moon coming up in this next month, um, it's a it's a real opportunity to like center yourself in your worthiness and pleasure and you know act christine we can't hear you that was good okay i think does anyone else have a question Thank you, Christine, and thank you, Meredith, for answering that, for asking that question. I appreciate it. Um, I have a question since nobody else is. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I felt like at times during the month, and not in the way we're speaking of, but like it realistically out of the loop um there was a call or a meeting that i missed i didn't really understand how it broke down so i could schedule it and know mm -hmm. so i felt like my access to like that discipline um i mean and i'm you know not that tech savvy either but i felt a little lost in there and there was i know one time i couldn't join because of something i had i was participating in but how can i like be you know aware of what's happening and be in aligned with that um so one of the things you can do is follow us on like set up in your facebook to get notifications when any of us are making something make okay. any of us are doing a recording so you like so if if you go in and look at a video you can say follow and then anytime okay. you we have done something you will get a notification that it's been done okay so that's one thing you can do um and then i feel like you know cheryl and christine and i can talk together to see maybe if we can create a cap, you know, more events or something like that, just to make it more accessible for you. So like, yeah, you know, like Zoom calls this week or um, <clears throat> what else have we done? Yeah, you know, like chat or just listening or like just to understand. Yeah. Like how that breakdown is. Thank you very much for that feedback. So we'll, like I might come to you privately just to talk more about that and then see how we can Sure. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. What we'll do in the um, in the beginning call for each phase, um, Monique, when you know we we do the call and we talk about the theme for the month, um, we usually will have the dates in there for um, the different meditations and the calls, and so that would be a really good thing if you catch that call at the beginning of the cycle because then you can kind of make a note of like okay this is when the new moon activities are going to be this is when this call is so that may be helpful too okay thank you thank you Good. guys you're welcome yeah you're welcome okay well if no one else has a question um you can if you register today, like I said, if you're not already registered, <laughs> already a part of the group, you can register today for $49 and I can get you the link. And I am, I'm excited. We're excited. So thank you for everyone who's been here for this past month. This, we have had rigorous work. We have been working, you all. Like this has been, you know, this work is not for the faint of heart. I will say that. I want to say it's not for the faint of heart, but it is 
good, easy, consistent work if you do it, if you show up for yourself. It's really a beautiful way to realign your body, your life, your mind, your spirit in a, in a, in a way that we haven't had access to before now, like using the moon. It's almost like therapy, right? It's fantastic. Um, and then, you know, with, with Cheryl and Christine and I, it's, it's really powerful because we've all, we have, we're experts in our own way. So I'm going to go because I'm tired. I'm really exhausted. So forgive me if I've been a little <laughs> off. Like I've been with my son for five days and it's, it's like I'm not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's really intense. And so I like I, if I don't have Mondays to just come down, I'm done. Like I'm really spent at this hour. So that's what you guys hear in me. I'm exhausted. And I have a group that I have to go to after this for three hours. So I'm really tired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so thank you all for your presence and for your patience. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Okay. Thank, thank you for you. your guidance. Yeah. Peace. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Nope. Go away. Oh. What do I look like? No, go away. How are you going to go away? Leave. Uh -huh.